The world has become a global village due to electronic innovation. Sitting at home, one can learn what is happening in the globe across. Even at this advanced electronic age, a big portion of Indian villages are untapped and unaffected by this evolution of the world. Especially, the bordering states in the north of India are cut off from the rest. Bijanbari is part of the world-famous Darjeeling district, over 7,000 feet above sea level. It embraces over 80 villages, of which the population numbers to over 2 lakhs in all. Being isolated from Darjeeling town, they do not have proper medical and educational facilities. The government aids were not reaching these remote villages. Therefore, these poor and innocent farmers were caught up in the hands of their moneylenders. Due to growing number of population and increased cost of all materials, people started cutting down trees. It is around this time for the Churian a Jesuit, Sister Mukti and Sister Srija, the Notre Dame sisters, landed in Bijanbari. Bijanbari mission began here 20 years ago. Two Notre Dame sisters, Sister Mukti a nurse and Sister Srija a social worker, they were the first to come and began the uh, mission as such. They have to walk miles visiting villages meeting people, studying and analyzing their problems before they hit the bed. Wherever they went, they brought healing, solutions and most of all, Christ Jesus. The Sabbath day of the week is the busiest day for Father Chirion. He makes one big round of the mission, offering masses. Bond. James Bond. He goes to Kaijalia substation, which is just above St. Mary's High School. This substation has got 14 families, which numbers to 110 members. Once again, our hero is on a two-wheeler driving to Kankibong Parish Church. Good road or bad road, he just keeps driving. The rest, he walks it off. Years ago, Mr. Titus Rai, Titus Rai, yeah, our first baptism here, along with uh, five others. And now we are reaching approximately 500. Kankebon Parish is the mother church of the mission. Now there are three Jesuits and ten Notre Dame sisters working in three centers, namely Hainjalia, Sumbu, and Rimbik. Four hundred and fifty believers come for service here.
The parishioners are divided into 10 basic Christian communities. They sort out most of their socio-economic problems themselves. There is a parish credit union from which they can access money in an emergency. It is time now to make another long journey to Rimbik substation. Whether it is a narrow road or a rocky path, his bike keeps going. This is Lodama, almost center of our parish. Now you follow 20 kilometers along the road, you reach Kaitalia, the other end. Our parish church is further up there. This is the electricity board colony. Now we have a little property there, next to that last yellow building right side, about an acre and a half for building a future church. Rimbik substation. Here, the parishioners are eagerly waiting for the parish priest to come and say the Mass. Twenty years of hard work has brought about a clear transformation in the life of the people who live here. This substation has grown from 5 to 15 families, which totals to 120 members. Three Notarium sisters live and work among these people. One is in charge of the school, another takes care of the dispensary, while the other caters to the spiritual needs of the believers. This area do not have any industry or tea gardens. People here survive mainly on the little land they have. Usually one acre, one and a half acre, maybe two acre, two and a half. So they survive by cultivating on the little land they have. Their main occupation is animal husbandry. Their approach is not just providing spiritual assistance, but providing holistic growth of human society. All the planning and processing are done with the people's participation. People have realized that only education would make a better future for their children. Our whole experience here has been very enriching. We have a holistic approach here. We work with the people, we live among them, and we have found out from them what is their priority. For them, education of their children was their priority because they said, our lives are ruined, nothing much can be done, we can do something for our children, so they want quality education. Notre Dame Primary School in Sumbuk was the first school of the mission. Now there are 450 students come from distant villages to attend their classes. academic excellence, they are trained in extracurricular activities.
Kainjalia St. Mary's High School as run by the Jesuits. We have now close to 1,500 students in our three primary schools and the high school. Students come from distant villages, up the hills, down the valley. They come all the way, walking up to two, two, some even walk up to three hours to reach here. The primary section of St. Mary's High School is run by the Notre Dame Sisters. Now we have 365 students in the primary classes, an average of 60 students in each class. So maybe that's what you have already writing. One day, one two people can attend. Healthcare is another concern of importance. Thus, two sophisticated dispensaries are run by qualified nurses or at the service of the people. Socio-economic development has become the prime focus of the missionaries today. The Notre Dame Sisters, with the pioneering effort of Sister Mukti and Sister Srija, have initiated self-help groups. So they went around different villages and they formed different groups and started work on our work, empowerment of women and uh, helping the children in different ways. Now, there are 22 self-help groups all around the mission. This program is run in collaboration with the Block Development Officer of the state government. One third of the total revolving fund of rupees 10 lakhs is the government subsidy, while the other one third is the mother's deposit. And the remaining money they generate annually through various programs like brew making, organic farming, toy making, and handicrafts. Twenty years of mission work has made a marked difference in the quality of their lives. Now they have tin sheets instead of straw roofs, better sanitation and drinking water facilities. Mothers and children are cleaner and healthier. Most mothers can read and write. Their children, a total of 2,000 in all, have quality English medium education in the four very schools of the mission. They know through education their children have a future. Now there is a lot of pressure on us 
more and more students are coming to our schools. Our classrooms are full. Some classrooms, like class 8 and 7 and 6 in Kaijalia St. Mary's, there are 70, 72 and 75 students in a class. Soon we will have to have two divisions in each class. We need more classrooms, we need more facilities in the form of ground, hall, a boys hostel, a computer training center and other vocational training programs. So now we are planning with the people, with our co-workers, Jesuits and Notre Dame sisters to uh, develop and enlarge our programs. This is the place designated for a boys' hostel. This is a location where we need to build two more cottages for additional classrooms. We already have uh, three cottages, cottage number one, two and three. And we'll have four and five here. With all this in mind, we immediately need to put in more infrastructure, make our place more welcome, open to them, always keeping it within their reach. There is an emerging need to start new branches of the school in few remote villages. When there is a real system, efficiency and economy is the holistic approach. It brings in empowerment 